10 years ago when we started the report, the environment was very different. And there was a lot of hype around the internet, a lot of anecdotes about how technology was being used in this village in India or by this community in Africa. But there wasn't much data in terms of actually was technology leading to effective development or higher levels of competitiveness. And what the technology report has done over the last 10 years has given us a very valuable base of data, which today serves as an important basis for helping decision makers in both public and private policy spheres to make important decisions around technology. One of the benefits of the Global Information Technology Report series is that today we have very valuable data that can give us insights into how countries improve over time. If you take, for example, Singapore, ranked at number two this year, Singapore has been progressively moving up each year, and this is the deliberate end result of decisions made by the government to invest in technology and to fundamentally help transform the country into an intelligent island ready for 21st century. Another country that's very impressive is Qatar, ranked at 25 this year. And Qatar symbolizes the transformation that is happening in many parts of the Middle East, where governments are investing very heavily in technology and using technology to create the alternate next generation economy that does not depend on natural resources. And the technology rankings over 10 years gives us many such similar patterns and evolutions over time. And together they provide a very valuable repository of case studies and best practices that we can all learn from. The rankings we produce each year in the Global Information Technology Report are based on a certain framework. The framework comprises three different pillars. The first pillar is around the environment, which measures the political, regulatory, and the physical infrastructure that's provided for technology usage in the country. The second pillar measures readiness of the key actors to use technology. The three actors we consider include individuals, businesses, and governments. And the last pillar, usage, evaluates the actual use of technology by these three actors individuals, businesses, and governments. Now, if you take any one country's ranking, you can dive deep, deeper into the framework and understand the relative strengths and weaknesses of the country along each of the dimensions. If you take the United States of America as one example, the US does extremely well this year at position number five. But if you deep dive into the various rankings of the US on the three pillars, you observe that the US does not do as well on the environmental pillar as compared to readiness and usage. On the environmental pillar, you find weaknesses in the infrastructure in the country, you find weaknesses in the, in the regulatory environment in the country, and also the bureaucracy sometimes posed to businesses based on variety of legal complications that are faced in the, in the country. So if you look at these elements in more detail, you start understanding what kind of elements you can focus on to improve the country's ranking in technology and to promote the use of technology more effectively inside the country. <laughs>